Hola, um, en Bilbao, bienvenidos uh, todos. Um, estamos un gran placer uh, de esta. Estamos aquí. Uh, sorry, my dear friends, I'm not 100% fluent in Spanish, uh, but uh, after uh, one or dos copas de vino rojo, uh, <laughs> it will be fluent tonight. <laughs> um, so, very, very warm well welcome to, um, to this panel and uh, Katja and uh, to the whole team here at BIME, um, thank you very much for having us here in this uh, beautiful city and the sun is shining, so it's always a positive energy to, to start a, a conference. And thank you for, for coming. This panel is, um, I hope it will be an interesting one, it's about uh, sponsorship and sponsoring um, brand uh, placement on uh, music festivals in Germany. Um, I myself, my name is Frugina Seb, I'm born Hungarian, uh, but I live and work in uh, Berlin. I'm the festival director of the first European edition of Lollapalooza and uh, of the Berlin Festival. And before that, I was the artistic director and the program director of the Seagat Festival in Budapest. So I also have a festival background, but I will not speak. I'm here to introduce and to guide my dear German colleagues uh, through this panel and hopefully you nice Spanish and Latin American and international friends from the music community will um, have after this panel loads of new and creative ideas uh, on your festivals or, or your events, how to work with uh, brands. So, this was the entree. And uh, to start the, the panel, it's always good to know who is sitting uh, at a panel, don't you think so? Yes, you agree? Good. Uh, so I would like to start first uh, with uh, um, my nice uh, colleague from Hamburg, um, Lara Goldsworthy. Um, Lara, can you please quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, thanks for inviting us all to be here today. My name is Lara Goldsworthy and I work for a music and art festival in northern Germany in Hamburg called MS Stockville Festival. Um, yeah, my job entails lots of things including press and communications, marketing and also sponsoring. So that's what we'll be talking about here today and uh, I think the idea is to let everyone introduce themselves. So I'll just pass the microphone on. My name is David um, Bolt. I'm the managing director of Feel Festival, a young festival which is just like now three years old and I'm taking care of booking and marketing and nearly just like a lot of stuff because we're a little small team there. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, hello, my name is Ralf Lützow. I'm uh, the head of international music marketing at uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, one of the most leading telco operators in Europe. And um, I'm really happy that you have me here in Bilbao. It's my first time actually. It's just unfortunately for a short trip for me because I have to rush to Warsaw after that meeting. So, um, <clears throat> and that is the main area where I'm working on. So the Central East European countries and Germany as well. But I always love to be in Spain and uh, today, especially here in Bilbao. Great. Yeah, uh, first time here as well. Um, my name is Timo Kuroszynski. I'm a senior brand strategist and head of music at the Munich based agency Millhaus. And uh, what we do is we offer brand consultancy and uh, marketing communication solutions from the fields of action sport, um, music and design. So uh, what we do beside creating concepts and uh, strategies is that we basically translate between um, the fears and the needs of uh, big brands and uh, the sensitivity of musicians and designers. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much and welcome. And I, um, so the idea of this panel today is that, that uh, um, our four panels, they will um, 
not only introduce themselves but also guide you through what uh, and how they work with uh, with brands especially uh, that we have um, Ralph here from the Deutsche Telekom, which is a um, very huge um, company in uh, in Germany, um, and um, he is actually he is the brand um, sitting here among us uh, festivals. Um, and I thought, if you agree, Ralph, that we start with you because Ralph has also a, a very nice um, presentation for us, which could give you and could, could give all of us um, a good overview how the Deutsche Telekom um, works uh, and represents its brand on festivals. Yeah, so <coughs> there's just one one slide, and uh, uh, just to show you. Um, oh, what we are doing different than maybe other companies are doing this, and even also it shows you a little bit the, an historic um, uh, overview about what festival sponsoring was in the past, and maybe what is what's the next, what's the future. So maybe some of you are familiar with the Electronic Beats program. This is what I funded 15 years ago uh, f uh, at Deutsche Telekom, uh, which is operating around Europe since now 15 years with uh, hundreds of uh, concerts and festivals. And uh, <coughs> uh, I can't um, count the artists anymore. So tomorrow we will, no, on Friday we will stream Dave Gone and Soul Savers Live from Berlin and a sold out show. That's one of our things we do, but also we do city festivals. That's a new s stuff we, do, uh, we tried out this year. Uh, but um, first of all, uh, what I uh, bring with me is uh, when you when you see how the, how the traditional sponsoring works, so then then that's always that you have to buy your rights and licenses. You go to a festival and ask if I can sponsor that. You get some decent rights uh, tickets, um, uh, branding rights, etc., and other opportunities. And um, so uh, then you um, maybe you create your own stuff. You do a ticket raffle. Maybe you have some cool stuff you do on the on the festival itself. There are th several other brands, breweries and uh, cars manufacturers who do that already in Germany like Suzuki or uh, 13s and then of course you create some owned media but I think the big trend what you see now uh, and not in in that case is generally generally is a content marketing strategy and this is what we are actually are doing since 15 years so that's the right side that's the magenta side you see there and I explain you the differences. The first of all, the difference is, uh, is the little brain, or not the little brain, uh, uh, upon the heart. So that's my team. That means uh, all the strategy, all the things which uh, we bring to our target groups and customers or to the music fans um, uh, is born in our company. So, uh, of course, I work with a lot of specialists, um, agencies and, and consultants, but uh, it's very important for me that the knowledge and stays and experience stays in our company and that we keep that as, um, as a really beneficial part, even also for the future. Excuse me, Ralph, just one question. So you have a creative team inside your yeah, company. but not a creative team, team which then uh, creates a layout or so. Yeah, so it's, it's about the strategy and about the program. Uh, we are not booking the artists, but uh, we are always in a constant exchange and constant discussion with our uh, specialists. Yeah, so um, the difference is that we have more control. So that's everything you see on electronic beats is, is uh, done by us. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, we are in charge of everything. That's on the one side, it's it's great because then you see what's going, what, what does well, what does not well. But on the other side, of it's a, tons of more work to do. So that's what you need to bear in mind. Some, what I'm saying is also that not the great side, is uh, is the the worst side. Yeah. So it's a different approach. It's even also mainly to drive awareness for your brand. Yeah. But uh, telecom has no problem with awareness. We had problems with uh, our our uh, how is a brand perceived by our our target groups. So therefore, we have to to tell a story. We have to we have no physical products. We are just a service company. So that's completely different. That was the reason we created our own content or branded content. That's the heart. You know, we have an editorial team sitting in Berlin. We have our own filmmakers sitting in Berlin. Our production company, a booking agency, sits in Cologne. And uh, so the paid media you see there is, of course, smaller. Yeah, I'm not saying that uh, it's, uh, you have to invest even also in paid media to, to market your program. So the, the, 
people need to find you, yeah? But then when they start to uh, love you and to st keep the relationship, they even also start to, to uh, promote that activity to other, to their friends and, and, and uh, um, uh, other, um, other channels. Uh, very important is the own media, and the own media then goes all those circles around um, the channels what we are using, from social media to our own, uh, of course, Facebook presence, SoundCloud, our own website. And um, so we have um, much, uh, uh, seven times higher engagement rate than, than, than Red Bull and other brands on Facebook. Uh, or even also uh, compared to Vice, you know? so they have of course, of course more fans on Facebook, but the, uh, the the engagement rate, so that people like, share, and dis uh, and discuss things we put on the on the social media, that's much higher than on on all those uh, different platforms. So that's the difference. So that is uh, um, uh, where where a brand takes more. Um, uh, or has more responsibility in that whole process, uh, even also that could work out with existing festivals. So we even also did an opening night at um, Spring Festival in Graz, or we even also teamed up with Melt Festival for um, uh, some cool stuff. Um, but of course, the main part is that we are run our own businesses, mm -hmm. and because it's important that we that we need to control and need to get it sole exclusive that messages. Uh, we want to to, uh, um, s to throw out to that target group. Great, thank you very much. Timo, yes. you are one of those experts who is working with brands. Yes, yes. Um, but you are one of those experts who is um, um, trying to establish a brand on a festival. Am I right? Yes, that's right. And um, the way uh, Telecom is uh, doing things is, uh, I can say, kind of, kind of exceptional because um, it's uh, way more radical because they really are dedicated to music and uh, they are dedicated to content marketing and creating own materials. So um, that's not how it works normally. It should work like this, but um, the world is kind of different. And um, so what we are doing is that we are... Um, Tell us the difference. Uh, <laughs> well, the difference is uh, that most of the brands, they um, see festival sponsoring as a bannering. They see a, a place for awareness and uh, in uh, my opinion and what we do at Millhouse is it's way more. It's about um, creating brand love and creating some, some value for the, for the people who are at the festival. And who is at the festival It's of course, the artists, but it's the festival visitors. And I, I, brought, uh, wait a minute. I brought a case um, from this year. Is it? Wait, wait, we we, we okay. have some nice help. Um, because uh, we handled the uh, um, festival sponsoring for our um, travel goods brand called American Tourista, which is a sub brand from uh, Samsonite. And uh, they were uh, one of the head sponsors from this year's Melt Festival in Germany. And um, yes, I brought this case because. Um, I wanted to, to, to show you the difference. Um, you can see some of the very classical things like uh, the logo and the banners uh, on the festival. And uh, the brand takes place uh, in a very used uh, way. And what we did is um, we thought about, okay, we have luggage, you know, uh, traveling to a festival with luggage is not that, uh, that normal actually. So we, we talked to the guys from Melt Festival, we, talked, uh, we had some very intense uh, conferences with them talking about uh, what do, does a festival visitor really need and um, if you look at this uh, service gap, for example, uh, like transportation, uh, electricity, whatever, um, you find a lot of creative ways to actually uh, put your brands in. And so what we did is uh, we invented the, the ice cube stage because um, you can see it on the, on the right downside maybe. Um, we had cool boxes that uh, were look alike, like the original uh, suitcase. And what we did is uh, the ice cube stage and offering uh, free ice to more than, I think, 6,000 festival visitors every day. And by this, we uh, found a way to, well, make the brand, uh, to, to, to experience the brand. It's about getting some emotional value to the brand. And um, if I can come back to the telecom, the, the, the whole difference is that most of the clients that we have, um, they sit in their office and they think about their product uh, all year, you know, and um, they, want, they want to have their product 
in everything they do, but sometimes it's it's much better to, to, to step back. And of course, we have the product there as well. You can see it uh, on the left side. Uh, we integrated the product into the ice cube stage. But the, the most important thing is that there was free ice. There was a name. There was an American tourister that made a good experience. And um, we played the whole story to, through all communication channels. It was more like a, like a real storytelling. Hey, we are here, and we, we understand you. And uh, yeah. It worked out. Just a question here: How and did you, how how were the feedbacks? What was what was your feeling, and what was the um, the the reaction of the brand? Uh, to be honest, um, uh, the reaction on site was uh, the, the ice cube stage. We opened at uh, 12 o'clock, and we had to close like th three hours later because we ran out of ice. It so was amazing. That's a good feedback. <laughs> And um, yeah, the brand, it, it was a process. To be honest, it was a process because, of course, they thought about their product first. Um, they said, okay, we want to sponsor festivals to get the uh, activation, to get the, the awareness, but um, we didn't make up our mind about product and festivals. So we came up with, with this cool box, and of course, in, in the first place, they were kind of skeptical. But in the end, we had an Instagram channel running, running every day that, um, that you, can get, you could uh, get a VIP upgrade if you take a, po a photo with the, uh, with the cool box. And uh, it was amazing. We have you could get a VIP upgrade yes, to um, the festival. To the festival on site. You could get access to the VIP area at Mel Festival if you take a photo on Instagram with the cool box. And uh, yeah, the reaction was uh, positive. And during this whole process of creating this idea, uh, you were in the middle, so you were in contact with the brand and you were in contact with the marketing department of the Melt Festival, right? Yes, that's right. And that's what I, uh, what, what I said in the beginning. It's, um, we translate, you know, we, we, we translate between uh, what brands uh, fear or what brands expect and uh, what, the, what the reality is actually. And, it's not that we just do the festival things if we have, because this is a, a small part of a big positioning campaign that we did in Germany. Um, we worked with electronic artists, uh, we made home stories, and the whole process that we did at Millhaus was to, to communicate uh, between these two poles, you know. It was uh, um, the, the sensitivity of musicians or festival visitors, um, that's difficult, but uh, in the end, it's all if you if you force yourself to think, okay, what what does what do the people really need? You find a lot of creative ways to integrate a product, even it's if it's luggage. Great, thank you very much. Here, just a, a very small thought. Uh, also, as a, as a festival promoter, uh, Timo said a very important thing here because many times there are brands who don't really. Uh, know what a festival really needs or what uh, the, the festival visitors would like to see on a, on a festival. And, and nowadays, uh, it is not only about the brand placement and also what Timo was saying, it's not only about you know, putting a huge banner on your festival because maybe you as a festival, you would like to have, you think creative, you would like to have a nice looking site you would like to have uh, you would like to create an experience uh, for the festival visitors and when we are talking about experience I had a really nice uh, chat um, today before our panel to Lara and we talked about exactly this the experience because nowadays festivals are the biggest uh, multicultural platforms for music culture and art uh, and it is about the experience and it is about us, how we create this experience. And in this experience, these brands who are sponsoring us, helping us as festivals, they're part of this ex experience. So, dear Lara, how do you do this in Hamburg? Um, well, there are lots of different aspects that we actually have. As you already said, um, we have realized that our audience um, have to dictate what they want. So, basically, the audience want to be entertained. They 
they don't only want to listen to music. They, uh, at most festivals that are longer than a couple of days, you can camp. Um, so you have a lot of time to pass, and they want to have experiences, they want entertainment, they want to find out new things. And our festival is quite, not necessarily <coughs> unique, but um, special in the sense that we don't like on-site bannering. We don't like any on-site branding as such because it's um, not subtle enough. And our audience has given us the feedback in the past 10 years that they um, would prefer other forms of sponsoring. So we set out, we don't have the translating tool that Timor has, and we contacted brands that um, fit our demographics. So we had to find out who is our audience, what do they want, what do they need, and to create this kind of experience, um, I can give you a couple of examples that might help, basically, that um, we have our own architects, for example, who build certain stages or modules that have our look and feel and not necessarily the look and feel of the brand, which is very difficult to communicate to brands because they're very set on their own colors or um, modules that they've had in other places, but if you get them to convince them that they will actually activate uh, an audience fulfilling specific demographics which they want to target, then um, suddenly the ball starts rolling and you, you can come up with creative ideas. So, um, for example, people on campsites, they're very, very um, easy to target when it comes to fashion or when it comes to, to, to beauty products, for example. So you can hand out dry shampoo from a certain brand and it's very subtle and you don't have to have a, a huge sign somewhere um, advertising that brand. Um, it's, um, it's helpful when you, when you sit down with a brand and talk to them about what, they, what their need is and that obviously you need content that exceeds the actual time of the festival. So people go to the festival and they stay there and they're on the campsites and you've already activated them to some extent or maybe if you've got some product that you can actually sell then you've got on-site selling. Um, but otherwise you want them to go home and to actually remember that there was something there that they'd like to actually look at afterwards and be it with social media content, that you have long tail communication. Um, we do that with several of our, of our brands who, um, who are actually, for example, we have a beer sponsor who would normally just have a beer stand and sell their products and be happy. And we said that we don't like that, it's too, um, too obvious. So we came up with an idea to let them um, sponsor not a stage as such, but on one of our areas, on our festival premises, we don't allow any kind of sponsoring. So it's completely free of sponsors. And they how agree... How big, sorry, how big is that area where you don't In allow? square meters. How much? In square meters, I have no idea. <laughs> you can fit 15,000 people on it. But that's pretty big. So it's pretty big, yeah. And it's... Um, the setting is very unique, so it's um, got a lot of trees and a lot of niches where you can hide and it's all very colorful and um, we want to keep that atmosphere. That's why we specifically mm -hmm. say that there are no sponsors allowed on that area. But we have one event or stage, as we call it, which is an interview situation where um, specific bands that, or acts that are actually going to participate in the festival sit there in the afternoon and um, it's like question and answer for the audience. And there's um, one special seat that if you're there early enough, you can sit on this chair. And as long as you sit on that chair, you're served this specific beer, but you don't know it's that beer you're drinking. So actually for the, for the brand, you basically say, okay, what's the point? But they hope that that way they will activate their audience and that they'll like the beer and that they don't know what they're drinking, they might ask later on. And um, that's the kind of subtle sponsoring that we try to keep because we value the fact that our audience doesn't like um, to be directly targeted, that they like to have activities to enhance the whole feeling. Mm -hmm. Ralph, I feel your energy that you want to uh -huh. say something. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, yes, of course. <laughs> How much people are attending the Dogfield Festival? How much? Many? We have 25,000 visitors per day. 25,000 per day. Mm -hmm. So when you say there's no branding on every stage, so is it, is it filmed, is it, is it reported to the net? So the, the festival, is it a... We do, have, we do have branding, but subtle, so we don't brand stages or anything, but we have one area that's completely free yeah. of branding. And there's another area where the main stage is, which is actually the smaller area where you'll have beer tents, for example. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you when it comes to, to uh, 
um, like to have a cemetery of brands on, 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 on your PA wings, yeah, that you have four or five brands on it, so that is completely bullshit. So, but I, I think for me as a, as a, uh, as a marketing um, uh, guy, and of course what I would like to, have to see is that I can receive some earned media when it's broadcasted or when the, when the people are um, throughout the messages and all the content from the festival. So, so therefore, I think uh, I need a visibility. Yeah, I'm with you that that should be a co a cool stuff. Yeah. So, but as uh, uh, I have tons of examples how we are we are uh, um, create this, I think that works out. So, because as a brand, otherwise I would uh, asking would asking you. So, okay, what's in it for me if I have no opportunity to make my brand visible? not only for the people who are attending there, even also to a broader audience, because when you see what, what happens when we do our festivals, so and we have, uh, we are not just, we are only just talking about, let's say, uh, 1,000 to five, 6,000 people participating, yeah? But when you see how many people watch the videos we, we, we stream or we, we put on demand on the internet, uh, well, of course, we, we clear that, that rights uh, for sure with the artist. Yeah, I have millions of people can watch that. So, and, uh, and I am as a brand don't want to to exclude people from an electronic beats festival. I would like to be an approachable brand so that people can. Uh, so, by the way, we are not giving away tickets for free. We are selling tickets. Yeah, but they are of course uh, uh, for a reasonable price, so they are pretty much uh, discounted. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm as a as a brand guy. So I of course. Uh, it's 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 great that uh, that you say okay. So I understand that. So stage branding it's it's quite uh, uh, difficult and and and, and um, uh, sometimes it's getting um, crazy what what some festivals are doing. But it's a question how you can make a brand visible without uh, yeah disturbing the connection between the audience and the artist or. Uh, get rid of the artists themselves, etc. But but those were examples, right? I mean, Timur gave an example of of the American tourist, for example. So I mean, I think what we're here about to talk about today is to give examples of of, of other methods of sponsoring. So, for example, as I understood correctly, in in Spain, for example, a lot of festivals still work like that. That you have brands on the stages and it's very visible and obviously of course I mean our beer sponsor the example I gave wouldn't do that if nothing came out at the end mm -hmm. so I mean it's obviously you always have to deal individually and to make sure that through long tail communication and that obviously videos on demand or whatever if you if you stream the interview stage um, people aren't necessarily going to know that it's actually that beer but you have other ways of communicating that and be it through logos or through communication in advance but, but that's a good example I really like the idea the interview stage yeah so because that give you can give you some sole exclusive so uh, if you I think it's not that problem when you say maybe it's a brewery but maybe it's another cool brand you say okay that's that's brought to you by and then you have the, the decent branding on it not not a big one you know so that they say okay this is run by by the brand where, where you have the, sh the opportunity to get in touch with the artist I mm -hmm. like that idea so so I think that's a good example so a uh, way can have something which can the brand put out and and, and let it flow through all the social media stuff etc Lara, I have a question here. Uh, the, um, am I right that Dogwheel Festival will celebrate its 10th anniversary next year? Yeah, you're right. So when, uh, great. <laughs> so when, uh, when did you, because I think this is also a very interesting kind of new way that you as a festival decide that you want to keep uh, an area free of, uh, of, of sponsors. When did you decide this internally in, with the team? Uh, I think it was decided from the beginning because our festival director is completely against any form of sponsoring. Um, so it was a long discussion to actually get him to accept sponsorship mm -hmm. because that's the way things work. You cannot grow in the festival business at the moment with all the competition that there is uh, without having financial support from brands, for example. And the only way we could convince him to do that was by making a compromise and saying, okay, we will leave that area of the festival premises because that's basically the heart of the festival where it all developed. I mean, we didn't start off with 25,000 visitors overnight. So the first edition was, I think, 5,000 people. And from then it just grew continuously Involved. and we had to sort of acquire other parts of the area because the festival is based directly in Hamburg. It's not our grounds. Uh, it's a difficult situation. 
um, but we own one part, um, and that's the part that we keep free of sponsors. Great. Interesting example. Dear David, how do you feel about uh, all this, what was uh, said? And uh, I pretty much like the name of your festival, the Feel Festival. What is the, the, um, the general feeling, uh, if I'm allowed to play with this uh, word, uh, at your festival in, um, with uh, the cooperation and um, the work together with brands and, and sponsors? Uh, as I said, we started uh, three years ago, so we are really young. And um, the people or friends I'm working with, they are all also from the, from the music scene. They're musicians or they're organizing parties in Berlin. And from a certain point, we thought about, okay, we nearly did everything. We did a concert, we did a party. Okay, there's much more, of course. But um, let's do a festival. And we want to do a festival that has just like, that, that's played by our rules, yeah? We didn't want to have any sponsoring, we didn't want to have anything. We want to create a feeling um, of a weekend you're spending with friends, with music, having a good time, um, and not just like, I, I don't know, just like there are several other f festivals, and as, uh, as we heard uh, earlier that, um, it's also still at the moment here in, 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 in Spain that um, there's a just like normal way of working with with uh, with, with brands like banners or whatever, and um, we now just like in the thirty we we grew really fast. First year we had uh, three thousand five hundred people. That meant that we had to just like stop working in the area. We uh, uh, we started the festival. It was really it was near the near the um, airport uh, Schönefeld, and on the second year we reached 6,500, which was just like really on the edge of the uh, maximum cap capacity. So um, the people still they 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 really liked that there's no there's, that there's no visual sponsoring, that there's no not a, a stage. Uh, yeah, stage brand or whatever. Um, and the year after that, this year, we reached um, 12,000 people, or we pulled 12,000 people, which is nearly incredible because... It's double. Yeah, really. And um, the thing is, we could sell, I think, 15,000, 15, 14 between 15,000, and only because we um, wanted to create something besides music like i said before like a feeling a great time you have during the weekend just like going out not in your place not staying in berlin just like driving 100 kilometers somewhere else and uh, meeting new people and which also is uh, special that we don't stop we don't have a break we start on friday and we stop on monday and next year we will <coughs> start one day earlier, so we have four days. And um, we found a way, I think this, is, this, this year was the first year where we work with a brand or with, I don't know, it's like, what, what do you need when you are in a festival? You want to yeah, get wasted, you want to drink, yeah? So you, so you work with, uh, uh, with a beer brand, whatever. And what we did is that um, we had an idea, okay, we can include them on our rules, yeah? So we um, have in the team, which is normally really small, but we have a lot of people who want to be part of it and are creative also. Uh, and uh, we build it like, like bars out of bottles for, uh, uh, yeah, in exchange of, uh, of, of, uh, of a support, you yeah? know, for a brand, for example. Um, and um, also, which, uh, which is quite funny, that um, we built kind of a garden um, from a liquor company that um, said, okay, during the camping area, what, what, could, what could we do with that? What looks nice, yeah? Which is not that, um, maybe not that interesting, like, like the, the, like the uh, um, ice 
ice thing, what, what is it called? Ice cube stations, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, we had we had like something like a garden there, yeah, which we can just like uh, collect some. Uh, no, I got the word. I, I missed the word. Whatever. But David, do we understand yeah. right? So the the so you had sponsors this yeah. year, but they were not visible. No. So, so nobody could. Uh, realize or recognize what brand you have on site. Yeah, right. That's also because that we, um, I mean, 80% that you see on the festival is built by own hands. It's just like it's out of wood and um, yeah, it's handmade. And how did these brands react to that when you, when you explained them that they, won't, they will be there, but they won't be there, I mean, visibly they won't be there? What we did is uh, we found some some brands. We you don't talk to a sponsor who is not uh, who don't has the, the the same philosophy that you have. You mm -hmm. want to have someone who really fits together. That's what what Lara said earlier. Um, so we found someone who was also just like had a what is it an art background is interested in 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 in, uh, in an alternative way of being part of a festival and being visible but not really visible you know, like something in between Ralph when you hmm? Jägermeister <laughs> Ralph a question to you when you listen to what David was saying um, or also what Lara was saying how do you feel as a but now especially uh, what David was saying how you as Tele Deutsche Telekom could you imagine like in the future, that could you represent yourself as well? Could you be involved in a festival like this with this philosophy? So my, my, co my colleagues in Germany um, sponsored uh, years ago uh, big festivals like uh, Rock am Ring, Rock am Park. So uh, very traditional stuff what they did. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, I think that's gone already. Yeah. So, and uh, a lot of festivals are called us and my colleagues in Germany, and they are seeking for sponsors. Yeah. So um, because we all know that uh, nowadays in the in the music industry, an artist can only survive when he is touring hard. Yeah. And they, and the artists are even also requesting now booking fees, which is uh, tremendously high. Yeah. So you have to 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 have the the money in place from your ticketing and and merch and 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 even also some sponsors. So sponsors help you or help helps or brands help a little bit uh, to survive the new music industry you know, when it comes to how can an artist uh, live their life today yeah? because uh, they make no money out of uh, music and streaming and uh, record sales, that's gone. So, and, um, so I think um, it's, it's of course, after all those years, uh, I think there is a, a development on the one side on festival promoters or on concerts and, br and, and artists uh, that they are uh, more open to dis discuss opportunities to work with a brand. On the other side, brands are now uh, learn much faster and they are much more experts right now in some companies um, how to deal with creative industries. And um, for instance, um, uh, sometimes it's so easy. We are, we are currently we're supporting in Germany David August and Ensemble. He's a brand new artist, a very young one, and he'd uh, love to go on tour. And uh, I said, okay, I, I can help you and help you to, to, that you can have a tour bus to travel from all those different concerts. And we have a branding on that bus as well. So because that's what I need. As I said, I need some material. I can, um, they make a picture, send it out via social media. I don't need to tell them that, that we are sponsors, so it's on that. But I, what, what we decided together with management and the artists is, but when you go on and produce your next album, so I would like to be there and let's do a record release event which we can film and then bring out to our channels. So that's where I would like to, where I, we have the opportunity to get sole exclusive content. So even we do not need to, to have a brand visible in that concert because we have uh, our station ID and our channel which is branded. So uh, I think that's, that's changing and of course on the other side you need also to, to give something for the brand which, where they can see if it's valuable to put some money in that sponsorship. Yeah? So if uh, you're, you're only 
seen uh, somebody who will give you the money and then that's it. So of course brewery and uh, Jägermeister and all those guys are pretty easy because they can sell their products on the festival. Yeah? So obviously I can do that as well, but for me it costs a, a hell of money yeah, to provide a proper Wi-Fi system. Yeah? I can let you know that we did pop a Berlin pop culture, so, which was in Berghain. I think uh, pretty much of the audience know what Berghain is. Uh, we brought a Wi-Fi connection, a fiber cable in that, in that venue, and that was a massive work we had to do. It cost us over 25,000 euros yeah, just to install the, the network there. Mm -hmm. So that is what, what even also to, I would always try to give a service to people on a festival or on a concert. But furthermore, as I'm, we are a participating brand, and that's why I would like to differentiate against our competitors or against breweries. So we do something where people getting engaged with the things we're doing. And when you see now Lula Palooza, when you see Coachella and other ones, uh, I think uh, there is a massive change in the festival landscape that, uh, or you're doing your field festival. It starts with glam camping, it starts with that there's an art food area, um, uh, it's, it's, it's design, it's tech, it's, uh, it's, everything comes together because it's getting a playground for adults. Yeah? And, uh, and, that's, and that's where it is. And Lula Very well said. Yeah, <laughs> Lula Palooza is in the heart of Berlin Tempelhof. So, and it, it stops at 11 o'clock if I'm uh, right. So you, you can yeah. easily go back home and sleep in your own bed. You don't need into a, into a, a rubbish um, a camping area. And it's or raining. go to Berghain and party until 8 a.m. in the yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so that's why we try to bring this together and we're thinking of, okay, now our business is, is going into more a lifestyle uh, affiliator. So like we are wearables and, and, and technology is into ours, etc. And that's what we are representing, that we're not just only having a concert anymore, that we even also team up like in Budapest where we did a city festival with over 50, 15, 50 local partners, labels, clubs, uh, fashion designers, uh, street food markets, etc. And that was amazing. And then for the first time I, I, I saw that it was much more than music. And that represented our brand perfectly. And, uh, and we have always artists who, that's very, very important for me. So when artists who are playing on Electronic Beats Festival, and you can ask them, most of all, all of them, they always feel very comfortable and they always love to come back to, to, to our festival because we always take care. We have the best backstage er, uh, areas. We do the best we can on traveling. And we are actually now the experts in is, uh, Central East Europe. So I'll bring uh, Stefan Co uh, Cosé and, uh, and, um, uh, and Hel to Tirana, Albania, end of November. For the first time, we're doing their uh, electronic beats event. Yeah? So that's, that's, that's places. This, this is not Spain, this is not Berlin, Berghain, yeah? So you are at the, at the uh, bottom of or Europe, and it's not an easy area, but my brand is there, and I have to do something there, and uh, that makes it interesting. So, and, and it's also, when you see, when you're in Eastern Europe, and you're, you're, I, th I think you're quite aware when you're at Festival, for instance, so in, uh, let's say, 10 years ago, that was quite difficult to bring even also new artists to that kind of festivals, because nobody knows that David August or John Hopkins or Caribou or somebody else. So, but now when you have, uh, or since the rise of Facebook and social media, uh, the opposite happened. So when we did the first event in Gdansk in Poland, where we had James Blake performing there, so, and when I came into the venue and James was on stage, all the people could sing along the lyrics. And that was amazing. So that was absolutely mag a magical moment. And um, so I think it's, uh, but for this you need an artist that he feels comfortable on stage, even if it's a branded event. Yeah? So that's, for me, it's always the challenge that I deliver a best, um, uh, a best scenario, a, a feel-good scenario for the artist and as well for the audience. Thank you, Ralph. You want to, to yeah. add something? To yeah, um, because... Um, and one more thing, my dears, because it's, um, we are about 10 minutes before the end, so I would also like to ask my dear panelists to, to sum up um, uh, this panel and to maybe give uh, um, also have a feedback to what Ralph was saying, but also to what are your challenges or what is your vision for the festival season 2016? 
Yeah, yeah I got, uh, I'm going to sum up because uh, I think one of the most important things is, uh, and that's what we realize as a brand agency worldwide, is that um, there's a shift uh, in marketing and there's a shift in how marketeers are thinking. And uh, I think it's not the question, um, do I want to have a sponsor on a festival or uh, I don't like sponsors because to be honest, as you said, it's a, it's a great way to, to finance your festival or finance at least a part of the festival. But um, brands start to realize that it's not just about uh, a big banner. It's about um, being on the festival and getting recognized in a positive way. And if, uh, if, you, think, if you start thinking about, um, okay, how can I help the people that are visiting the festival? How can I help the artists with the brand because they are giving me money so they have the right to at least uh, talk with me and uh, to, to make up some ideas and the, the thing is uh, because I think the whole discussion might be a, a little bit too extreme uh, and festival sponsoring yes or no because I think nowadays there's a great chance for everybody who, who, who has a festival and even uh, David with his field festival who, and who started with no branding and now they have sponsors it's, uh, it's uh, the chance to really develop um, sponsorships that, um, that you love as a festival maker and that your people love as a festival visitor. And uh, with brands like Deutsche Telekom, and hopefully there will be a lot of other brands that will uh, take part in the shift, um, there's a new thinking on how to, to, to do marketing in uh, live music and the creative industries. And, I think that's a it's a, it's a it's a great opportunity for for all of us um, for marketing agencies for brands for festivals because um, um, in our agency we, we we tell things like maybe we are at least uh, we could be uh, somehow the good guys in the end because it's we start to make things that are not just marketing and advertising um, of course I need to to see who sent the money or who because you you, you referenced the logo. But it's, uh, it's a great way to do cool things that really help people. And I think this, is, this should be the way we all should start thinking. Thank you very much. Alf? Yeah. Um, I think uh, there is something which is very much important when you are uh, working with brands, because um, my, uh, even myself, I don't need to convince you guys what I'm doing. And I always get uh, very lot of props what, what Telecom is doing. But I can tell you, I always have to fight since 15 years for my stuff I'm doing in the company. So when you talk to our controlling guys, when you talk to my, my CEOs, etc., so I almost live, overlived four CEOs, actually. So, uh, so therefore, I need uh, help sometimes by the partners we are working with to give me that extra, even if it's a kind of, okay, we can help you with the research or whatever, yeah, that you can sell it in your company. Yeah? So, because when we compare the amount of money a telecom, for instance, um, spend on music to what we are spend on sports, especially football, yeah? so then it's a, it's a minor budget what we have. Yeah? It's a minor budget. So, um, and, they, and of course, in the, what we need to, to sort out if we can get more from that sports business to the music side. Mm -hmm. Of course, then to invest it cleverly and, and sensitive so that it's working well for everybody, yeah? But I'm, I'm the one who's doing always win-win partnerships. I don't like that other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I always do it like this. And I think all the partners we worked with in the past, they, um, they really found that this was a fruitful cooperation. Keep up this good vibes. <laughs> David. Um, yeah, to sum up everything, or just like I got some, some new ideas, maybe, from this panel. But That's already good. Yeah. And hopefully also the audience. <laughs> um, and what I would say, just like also for next year, is to get some, I mean, we got some examples, to maybe think more out of the box, not stuck in just like alternative uh, ways of thinking, work with brands together to maybe get more in contact with your partners that's what we try to do and to find a creative way to include a brand into your product into your festival into your concert to uh, work with them together and like I've said to get a win-win situation out of it yeah thank you Lara 
Um, there's not really a lot left to say. I think we all agree on the situation that it has to be win-win. It's all about giving and taking. Um, you can't have a festival without sponsorship. That's pretty obvious. We all agree on that. But stay true to yourself and look after your audience because you don't want to sell out. And it's all about making it um, a win-win for everyone, not only for the festival and the brand, but also for your target group. And that they all feel happy and content. And that's, I think, it's not an easy solution. Yes. And just a, uh, also one final thought I wanted to, to give you as well, that, uh, for example, this year at Lollapalooza in Berlin, we had, and what all of my colleagues were also saying, yes, as festivals, we need sponsorship, because so what Ralph was mentioning, and it's really true, and I'm sure many of you experience this as well, the rise of artist fees is uh, tremendous, because uh, festivals are the biggest platforms nowadays for the, for the music industry. But I experienced this year something very unique, um, because at, uh, at Lollapalooza, our uh, mission and vision was also not to create only a music festival, but to create already from the first year uh, a festival also for arts and sustainability, for uh, human issues, and to create a, a festival as an experience. And I found um, a sponsor in Berlin who sponsored our biggest art project. It was an urban art project. It, it was called The Cube, uh, All Nations Under One Roof. And it was a eight by eight meter big giant cube in the middle of the festival because uh, our philosophy was to create with uh, Lollapalooza an open art gallery and to have a vernissage and a finissage at the same time on the festival. And this uh, art, uh, piece of art uh, was on all the pictures um, and it was uh, a cooperation of seven international um, urban artists, street artists, and it was 100% financed. Uh, by uh, a sponsor that was not visible on that art piece. So it's possible, uh, and uh, many times your, your creative people are in your companies. Be, and what, uh, what my colleagues were also saying, think outside of the box, that it's in you. Be brave enough to, to, to have your ideas. And many times when you think one idea oh no, this will never work, or a sponsor will never agree to this. Many times, these most crazy ideas are the best ones that work. So, thank you very much that you came to this panel. We had to finish on time, but um, I heard uh, that we can still stay in this room, so if you have questions uh, to the dear panelists, uh, we can still um, uh, stay here, except Ralph, because he has to hurry. Uh, but, uh, Some time to have but thank you very much for, for, for coming. Thank you very much to Lara, to David, to Ralph, and to Timo, and to Bime for, for having us here.